This is the 3D AutoCAD drawing exercise in which we're going to create a very simple building using most of the features in uh, AutoCAD for 3D. And we'll start off with a 2D drawing. File, open, and we go to the shared drive, student shared, 00, zero departmental, 04 IT support, 03 3D CAD, 3.18 simple building, and you'll find a file there called stage 1, and open that file. You'll notice that there's some additional toolbars here that you might not use normally. This toolbar is called visual styles, this one is called solids editing. This is the 3D navigation toolbar, and this one here is called UCS2. So you need to add those to your work area, ideally, otherwise you'll be going backwards and forwards trying to find commands. I'll just describe what we've got here on screen. We've got a very basic plan of the building. We have some pretty crude 2D elevations, but they're reasonably well drawn. You know, the heights are correct. So the red, uh, red stuff is elevational, and the green stuff here is uh, the shape of the roof, viewed, viewed in the side elevation. What we'll do first is just transpose some of the, the sizes from this front elevation onto the plan. So I'm going to choose a layer for that, and I'll call it external wall. So I'm just going to create some very, very basic lines. I'm going perpendicular to the window opening. Zoom in a wee bit. Let's just check our object snaps. Is perpendicular available? It's not. Let's tweak these slightly. Okay, I want to go perpendicular to the window opening. And then another basic line from there to there. I'm going to move those onto the drawing. Uh, I didn't move that very accurately, did I? got them accurately positioned on plan. Now what we'll do is we'll use the constrained orbit command to view this model at an angle so we can see what happens in 3D. So for that use the constrained orbit command. Your icon changes to like a kind of a nucleus type of shape and you can click and drag the, the screen over. Press escape or right click and exit. Now the height of the front elevation is 3 meters high. That's a nice round number, but perhaps it's, it's not a nice round number. What we can do is make change the thickness of these lines to be the same as the height of the elevation. So to, to achieve that, you best to use the, the keyboard entry for the change command. Minus CH, return, pick the three lines and return. We want one of the properties of this, so it's P, return, then T for thickness, and then you specify your thickness by picking on the reference drawing. Pick your two positions, then press return. We could have basically just said three meters high, but if you didn't know the height, say here, where it's, it's, it's a kind of a turnout size, then it's, it's a bit more difficult. Okay? To get window, the, the area of the wall below the window and above the window, we need some more lines to work with. So I'll just draw in two more fresh lines. Okay, let's show you other ways of getting things to different positions. If I turn my O snaps off, 
then I can use the move command. Pick the line, return, don't pick a base point, we just want to change the z-coordinate. So I'm going to type in 0, 0, 2100. 0, 0. Now what's happening here is it's saying don't change the x-coordinate, don't change the y-coordinate, just add 2100 0, 0 onto the z-coordinate. Press return twice. The line jumps up relative to where it is by 2100. 0, 0. Like I say, that's a relative displacement. Okay. Another way of doing that would be to adjust the UCS. So I'm just going to make the icon a wee bit bigger to start off with. Use the UCS icon command for that. I want properties of the icon. I can make it a bit fatter and a bit bigger. So you can see what's happening a bit clearer on the screen capture. Now we want to be dealing with this front elevation. Now front elevation has a name, it's front. I could select it from here. I've got a simple building, it's got you know east, west, north, south kind of elevations. That's very good. The alternative is to rotate the icon using one of the axes that are shown. Let's try that. UCS return I need to rotate around the x-axis to get the y-axis pointing upwards. So I type in x and return, and I want to rotate by 90 degrees and return. I can then use my move command, pick the object, return, this time pick a base point, and relative to where I am, I could move it up to 1, 0, 0. If you don't need to use that UCS again for anything, then you need to reset it. Either choose World UCS from here, or type in UCS and return twice. I need another line to work with. Put my O snaps back on, from there to there, and return. And then need to check something from my elevation. Let's see what the size is. I'll ask it a distance. How high is the windowsill? From there to there. I'm only interested in the Y coordinate. Delta Y 900. Do another distance. From there to there. Again, delta Y. That's the difference in the Y coordinates. 900. So, looks like we're 900 for everything. You could use the normal change command if you wish, the change properties. That will bring up the change properties tool. Enlarge that a wee bit. I can pick these three lines and change their thickness to 900 and press return. Press escape a couple of times to get rid of the grips. Now that's a fairly crude way of creating 3D shapes taking lines and giving them thickness. One of the problems that it has, if I show you using the front elevation, if I want to try and raise the height of this position, I'll use the stretch command for that, capture the corner, return, you'll see that it drags up its relative bottom corner as well. Not so usable. Okay for boxy type stuff, but anything complicated Lines with thickness aren't really going to help you too much. Put the UCS back to world. So that's one method of creating 3D objects, probably the simplest and crudest. We'll have a look now at a more complex way. One reason we don't use this method is because the welding of the 3D objects isn't very good. Ideally, objects that meet each other should really share the corners. So where these two, this object and this object meet, it's sharing a corner here, but it's leaving a corner behind at this point. 
If I just draw over the top of that in a different color, it's maybe it will maybe be clearer. So if I draw lines over the top, what should happen here really is that kind of interaction between the objects where this shape is actually that shape. If I shade this, try the smooth shading, hmm, that's not really helping us here, but the welding you can see isn't working. The objects aren't joining together. They're still leaving lines between them. What we should see really is smooth color going all the way around. Whenever you're working in 3D, if commands don't behave themselves, come back to 2D wireframe. It's quite often that you're in a shaded view that you can't get something to work. Watch out for having too many objects too many of these utilities running as well. It can sometimes stifle 3D. Okay, on to the second method of modeling. This is creating 3D faces. I'm going to use the plan command to send the drawing back to its normal top-down view. The plan command is related to the UCS. Whichever way the UCS is working, that's what you get when you type plan and return twice. I'm just going to delete these two small objects and then turn off the roof setting out. And instead of using lines and giving them thickness, what we'll do now is use a more complex object called a 3D face. And to create that, use the command 3F. Now, ideally, you create 3D faces anti clockwise. This means that they the faces are facing towards you. Okay, if you create them anti-clockwise, they'd be facing in towards the, the screen of the computer. It's not a big deal. You can tell 3D Studio to, to render both sides of an object, but it's just a kind of a regime that, once you get used to it, it's quite easy to do. Now, you can create four-sided 3D faces or three-sided ones. I'm going to start off with a four-sided one. Pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four, return. Now I should change back to uh, by layer and make the object be the correct color again. Can you see now that the, the shapes you end up with are kind of trapezoidal and dis distorted but they're covering the surface efficiently. Let's put another 3D face in. I can put a big one in now. One, two, three, for return. But don't go back to where you started. Now this is a trickier situation. These intersections are in line with each other. If I did a four-sided shape from there to there to there to there, then actually that shape wouldn't, wouldn't work correctly because two of the sides of the 3D face are in line with each other. There has to be an angle subtended between them. 3F, but this time it's a three-sided one. Pick one, pick two, pick three, return. Return again to stop the command, return again to bring back the command. Pick one, pick two, pick three, return. Return again to bring back, to cancel the command, return again to bring back the command. I can finish off with two four-sided ones. These could be done continuously. Just going to turn off some of the O snaps here. Okay, first point. Got to carefully pick it to, to use this opportunity. Pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four. I'm not stopping the command. You'll see that it says carry on. Do you want a third point? So it did third, fourth, and then third again. So third, fourth, return. A quick shade to make sure it's done it nice and clean. Okay, now that was nice and quick, but the object isn't on the model. We need to manipulate this to get it onto the model. Firstly, we best to rotate it in plan. 
our lock layer set out just so we don't accidentally move the red material below it. So the first command is a rotation, so it's RO, return, capture your yellow objects you've just created and return. Pick a reference point, ortho's on, so the rotation's quite easy to do. To lift these out of the page and align them with this portion of the, the, the plan requires manipulation of the UCS. We need to lift the UCS off the ground. We did it last time by doing UCS return X return 90. This time we could make it simple for ourselves and just click the front UCS and then rotate. So it's RO return put a window around the same objects return when you're working in the 3D view you're best to try and pick a position on an object otherwise you could be picking a position in space a long way away so the base point somewhere easy to get at that's unambiguous ortho's on I'm just dragging the cursor downwards I then need to move those objects into position so it's M return why not try P for previous objects so it's P return return again this is a nice clean base point and take it to your destination point starting to build up let's do the other two elevations in a slightly different way we need to put the UCS back to normal And it's fairly safe to do this in this view. What we need is to to polyline these shapes. We can then create a, what's called a region and subtract shapes from each other to end up with a single plane for that elevation. So we need to put rectangles over everything here. that one all those windows are the same size okay there's nothing solid there at the moment still transparent but when we use the the region command which shortens to reg you can pick these clean closed polylines and return I got six loops extracted and six regions created so that'll be one two, three, four, five, six. So just keep an eye on the numbers. Try a shade now. Ah, we have a solid looking object. What we'll do now though is subtract the shapes from each other. So on the solids editing toolbar use subtract. Pick the main object, the one you want to subtract the things from, and press return. Then you can carefully select the other sub-regions and return. It's nice and quick. It is quicker than using 3D faces but it does have the problem that it's not very editable. I can't drag the positions of these windows. Let me show you that on this model instead. If I wanted to widen the doorway And that's relatively easy. So it gives you a bit more flexibility design wise, but it's a bit slower. Okay, as I say, try and work in the 2D wireframe wherever possible. Use the shading just for checking that you've not missed out holes in places. This wall needs rotated 180 degrees and then lifted off the off the paper. So RO return the object, return, base point, and a full 180 rotation there. Instead of the front UCS, to be able to rotate this off the page, we'd need to be looking at in this elevation. And that would be called the right UCS. Then rotate again, RO, return, 
take the object, return base point, and then drag to do your rotation. And then move M, return, pick the object, return, look for a reference point that's going to give you a nice clean move from that corner of the window to that. Should look okay. Now, this thing's looking a bit strange here when I shade it. It's invisible. That's because this region faces only one direction. If I rotate the model, it becomes shaded again. Okay, you don't get that effect with the 3D faces or the lines with thickness. It's not a big deal. You know, don't duplicate things on top of each other just so you can see color on both sides. It's still a solid object. Something like 3D Studio will recognize that as a, a plane. No need to worry. Okay, then a final elevation. A wee bit trickier here. We'll need to I think what we should do here is unlock layer set out, copy everything onto the next wall layer. So we'll just copy this stuff, CP. I don't want to lose the original stuff, we might need it later on. So I'm just going to copy it up to there. Accidentally picked up a copy of that one as well, didn't notice. Okay, and then we'll region this object. Now regioning should actually behave, should actually occur, even doesn't matter which UCS you're working in. So I should actually be able to region all those objects, even though I'm in a side UCS. I just selected the whole lot. And same with subtractions, it's not specific to a UCS. I pick the main object, return, then the sub objects and return. Give it a shade. That's it. Very quick. Very quick little elevation. We need to rotate that and put it into position. We could do the first rotation now. Doesn't have to be done in plan first. So rotate, pick the object, return, base point, destination. We now need to go back to the world coordinate system to get the, the last rotation. RO, return, pick the object, return, base point, drag, and then move the object, base point, to destination point. It's shaping up now. We've got enough form now to start looking at the roof of the building. Now, for this building, if I turn back on layer roof set out, have a look in plan, plan return twice, you'll see that we've got two layers. We've got a kind of a soffit shape with a, a profile that runs around the outside, and also a, a kind of a deck on the top. Two different objects to cover this building. Give yourself a 3D view to work with. Zoom in. And to do to achieve this, we will for the first layer, for that soffit layer, we're going to bring in an object at this position and extrude it around the edge of the roof to create a solid object. We'll then fill in the middle. We need to set our UCS to be the roof plane that we have there. I don't know what the angle is. It's probably something quite awkward. It's not likely to be a nice round number. Okay, if you've got even number here, even number here, then the angle is likely to be pretty nasty. So to do this, we use what's called a three-point UCS. So you get to that through the UCS command. So it's UCS return three and return. Doesn't notice it doesn't show up on the the list here. My origin point must be on the object or you're not going to get the right result. So origin point here. Any it's asking me for any positive point on my x-axis. 
This is quite important because this is you deciding which way generally the UCS is going to face. So I need to try and find a clean endpoint somewhere along this top of the wall. I've selected this position here. It's then asking me for a positive position on the in the y direction. Now that could be actually anywhere, but the rotation will be determined by whether I pick top or bottom here. If I pick down here, the angle, the roof isn't actually going to be, it's not going to be in the roof plane. It's got to be up here on the top of the wall. Could be either though. doesn't matter if it's this one or this one. It could be a position along that line. Using the nearest O-snap, I could pick any position up that line or up this line. hope that makes sense. Pick a nice clean position. You'll see that the UCS, the X and the Y, are now operating in this plane. I've got some layers ready for use. So let's pick the roof soffit layer. And I'm going to draw a polyline that starts at the midpoint here. I'll explain why in a moment. Put PL, return. I need midpoint, so I'm just going to type in mid and return. Start my polyline here. And then trace around the roof. Don't press the letter C to close it. Just bring it back to where you started and select. Then press return to stop the command. So I've got a polyline here, but it's got five positions on it instead of the four that you might have expected. Now I've done that basically because if, when we extrude a shape around there, it's better to start in the middle of a line somewhere than at a corner. You might get a strange result if you start at a corner. Okay, now I need to bring in a block. It's, it's, it's the shape of the edge of the roof. I've drawn it in already. So let's see what happens when we do that. Insert a block. Within the drawing, you should find roof prof. Click OK. And the roof profile is sitting there, placed at the endpoint. It's not in the right direction, though. That's the problem. What we need to do is make an adjustment to the UCS so that this is facing out the way from the roof. So I'm just going to delete it and tweak the UCS. I can't use a named UCS now. I've got to do this using proper controls. So UCS return. I need to get the X coordinate off the ground. So I rotate around the Y axis. Y return 90 return. Now this should be okay to use. Insert again block Roof profile's there. Put the tick on rotation as well. And you should be able to control its position. Okay, find the end of the end point on the polyline. And can you see now that it's it's behaving itself, it's working in the kind of side plane of the roof. Set your angle there. Okay. I now need to explode that object, so it's X return the object return and then we'll use an extrude command so it's ext return the object that you extrude has to be a closed polyline as well or you'll get a strange kind of polyface mesh object which is, creates thousands of faces pick my polyline return I want to extrude this I don't want to just drag it out because I don't know any of the distances involved here I need it to follow the path that I created. So it's P return. The path is the polyline. <laughs> so it's dragged that shape all the way around the roof. If I shade it, you'll see that it's hollow. We haven't got a middle bit. We do have it all working at the corner properly. It's curving in two directions at the corner. Very tricky thing to model by hand. It can be done, but extrusion does it much quicker. If we put the UCS back 
to where it was before, I can do that by UCS return P return. And just temporarily move your roof out of the way. It's just because it's all sitting in the same layer. We now need to extrude this polyline up by the thickness of the roof. Now, if that's a nice round number, it's easy, 250. But you could specify your distance using the objects, just like we did with the thicknesses earlier on. So ext return, pick the polyline, return, the height of the extrusion. It's a wee bit trickier. In different versions of AutoCAD, this kind of behaves itself. Sometimes it doesn't. What it's probably best to do here is type in the 250. Otherwise, it's going to give us a bit of a strange result. Okay, then you can move back using proper object snap control, move the roof back into position. Now it's solid now, the roof's solid, but it's still two objects. It should really just be one object. So to join them together, use the union command. It's union, pick both parts of the roof. When you press return, you'll see a few of the lines disappear. That's your clue that they've been merged together. And it shades now. There's no additional line in there. Good. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's also another roof shape. Let's just see how far away it is. It's 150 millimeters away and 150 millimeters high. Nice round numbers. Change to layer roof cover. And then create a rectangle over the top of the roof. And you'll see that the rectangle won't change its height. It's staying in the plane of the roof. It's a wee bit strange the way the O snaps don't necessarily link onto the object. The position of the OSNAP icon is actually relative to this yellow object because that's where we chose the origin for the UCS down at that bottom corner. So don't be thrown by that. It will still give you an accurate overlay on the object. Then we need to offset it. O, return. It's 150, return. Okay, press escape to get rid of offset. Delete the original object, and then you can extrude this by 150 millimeters. I'm just going to check the height of that. I think that's one. That's 100. Okay, so ext return. Pick the object. Return. And the direction and height we want. Try and imply a direction if you can depending on the version of 3D Studio AutoCAD that you're in, and direction, distance of 150, return. Okay, so we should have a cap on our roof now. If I tilt it over, you'll see a soffit in that fashion. Okay. Now, we have a roof on. that and we'll pause just there.